How's it going everyone and welcome to how to read and write in hexadecimal form. Now if you haven't seen my binary videos I'd recommend going checking those out first but it's a very similar process in the idea of how these numbers are created so let's get right into it. Starting out we're going to do an example of just a random number I made up of 3F8. So I'm sure you've seen hex numbers and they have these letters in them and you might be wondering what these letters mean. So let's go over the basics. So basically all hex numbers will be comprised of either 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, a, B, C, D, E, F. So after 9, instead of going to 10 or 11, because those are just reusing the same numbers we just named, it does A, B, C, D, E, and F for 10 through 15. So this is a base 16 system, so you can see how we have 16 options, including the zero, of course. So 16 different numbers that we can put in any specific spot. So starting out with an example of 3F8, let's say. 3F8 is going to have three digits. So we're gonna, on our paper here, if you wanna practice along with me, draw three dashed lines. And just like binary, each of these lines have a numeric value already associated with them. Starting from the right and moving left, you have one, 16, 256, 4096, and it jumps really fast here to 65,536. And if you're wondering where these numbers came from, it is just 16 to that power. So the first number is 16 to the power of zero, which anything to the power of zero is one. The next one is 16 to the one, which is 16. The next one is 16 to the two, or 16 squared, which is 256, and so on and so forth. Basically, every time we're just multiplying 16 together more and more. If we go to the number 3F8 again, we have three digits. So the three is going to be 256, the F is going to be 16, and the eight is going to be one. And just like binary, all you're gonna do is multiply down what these values are with the value associated with where they are sitting and add them. So we're gonna do eight times one, which is eight, we're going to do 16 times F. Now F we have to convert, F is 15, remember? So on the top there, anything after nine, A, B, C, D, E, F, are actually 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So that is, F is 15, so that is 15 times 16. And then the last one, we have three, that'll be three times 256. So three times 256 is 768, 15 times 16 is 240, and eight times one is eight. You add all those up and you get 1016. So that is our decimal number. And if you're wondering why we have hexadecimal, the binary version of that is 11111111000. So if you can see how much easier it is using hex to convert larger numbers especially, it's a lot easier for humans. The computer will actually end up taking that hex value and converting it to binary anyways for it to work with, but for humans, it's a lot easier for us to use hexadecimal form when you're coding and whatnot. Now that we've done that, same as my binary videos, let's do the opposite. Let's get a decimal number and convert it into hexadecimal. And it's a little trickier with hexadecimal just because the numbers aren't as easy as a base 10 system or a base two system. So let's get started. So let's start with 20,000, a little bigger number here. And same with binary, you're gonna to wanna to set up your bases. So you have 1, 16, 256, 4096, 65,536. Again, that last one's usually not needed, that's for bigger numbers. But again, you pick the largest number here that can fit inside 20,000. So immediately we know that the 65,000 number, we can't even use, because even if you had a one there, you're already at 65,000. So that one can be completely ignored. This is going to be a four digit number we can already tell. So it is only gonna use four spaces. So we're gonna start with the largest space of 4,096. We need to figure out how many times we can fit that number into 20,000 without going over. And if you just simply divide 20,000 divided by 4,096, you'll get 4.88. So we know it can only fit four times and some change, but we don't want the change, we want the whole number. So four, we're gonna take four and do four times 4,096. That gives us 16,384. And all we're gonna do is one, we just figured out our first digit is four, and two, all we have to do is take our, our overall number that we're trying to solve for, the 20,000, and subtract whatever that gave us. And we're left with 3,616. So as of now, we have our first digit of four, we need to solve for the other three. So this is basically a whole new problem in itself, basically just restarting the process, so it's pretty easy. Now our main number is 3,616. We have to figure out how to get rid of this number. So how many times can the next digit fit in it? So 256, how many times can that fit into 3616? 
Do the same thing, we divide. 3,616 divided by 256 is equal to 14.125. Again, we don't care about the decimal, we want the whole number, 14. So that is our second number here. We already got two of the four digits. That is our second number, 14. If you take that 14 and you actually multiply it by 256, you end up getting 3,584. Again, we're just gonna take our value of 3,616 and subtract whatever that gave us, and 3,616 subtracted by 3,584 is 32. So now we just repeat the cycle once again. We're down to our last two digits here, guys. So 32 is actually a lot easier because we can see 16 fits into 32 perfectly two times. So that immediately, we can see 32 divided by 16 is two on the dot, no decimals, that's our last number, two. So now we have four, 14, and two, and we've ran out of digits, we're at zero. We've, we've subtracted everything we can from 20,000, which means anything past that is a zero. So if we ended up doing this process way ahead and we still had a couple digits left, all the rest are gonna be zeros. In this case, it's only one. So that last digit of one is just gonna be a zero here. So our final number here is four, 14, two, and zero. But you might be asking already, well, why is that 14 still there? Because we only go up to nine when we do these digits. And you are correct. We have to convert that 14 back into a letter. So 14 on here is actually E. So this ends up being 4E20. And in hexadecimal, 4E20 is equal to 20,000. And you might wonder why I picked 20,000 in this case. And it's actually because hopefully when you're watching this video, I'm past this, but I am trying to reach 20,000 subscribers. So if you guys could please try to subscribe, if you like videos like this, check out my binary, check out my other stuff. You want any video to be made, leave it below in the comments and I'd be happy to talk to you guys about there. But I'm really trying to reach 20,000 by the end of the year here. I hope this video helped you guys. And if you have any questions, please leave them below. I will be sure to get with you and try to clear some stuff up if it wasn't that clear in this video. Hope you guys have a good day and I'll see you in the next one.